Now, once again, joining the roundtable, a man who's covered the Tennessee Vols for 30 years this year, the authority voice on all things Tennessee from VolQuest, Brent Hubbs. Brent, how we doing, man? About time to play some football here. It is. It's time to go. You know, the off seasons get shorter, but uh, this is a fun off season for this Tennessee team and obviously a fun start to camp with a ton of expectations. I mean, you said it perfectly. We're getting you right after the first day of fall camp. What were your overall impressions of the Vols on day one? I know they're just out there in shorts and a T-shirt, but still, what were your overall uh, takeaways from the first day of camp? I, you know, I think it's the eye test, and it's the look the, look the part. And I think when you look at Tennessee, this young recruiting class, the last couple of recruiting classes that they brought in, past that eye test, when you talk about the Arian Carters and Jeremiah T. Landers at at linebacker, you're talking about Caleb Herring coming off the edge as a defensive end, uh, the transfer John Campbell at offensive tackle from Miami. You know, from where this program was two years ago when 30 guys transferred out before Josh Heupel arrived to where they are now, this is a more complete-looking football team. They're like every college team around the country. J.D., they got holes to fill. But this is a team that's much more physically, from an eyeball standpoint, look more like an SEC team than certainly they did two years ago. And with that being said, you mentioned a couple of names right there. Are, are those the guys that you're expecting to maybe stand out as fall camp wears on? Are there some names that you're watching maybe a little closer? What, what are your thoughts in terms of individuals for, for the Vols this camp? Well, I think it's the transfer market because you're trying to plug and play in some holes. So John Campbell, as I mentioned at left tackle, I think it's vital for Tennessee. Keenan Peely to step in at linebacker, the transfer from BYU, I think is really important uh, for Tennessee as well. And on the offensive side of the ball at receiver, you're looking for a replacement for Jalen Hyatt. You've got Squirrel White there, but you bring in Dante Thornton from Oregon, who's definitely got all the, the measurables that you want. He's put on some weight this offseason. He looks a good bit different than he did in the spring, which is encouraging uh, for Tennessee. So those are some of the transfer guys. I think if you're talking about freshman impact, you may go to the tight end position where Tennessee is trying to fill some holes and create some depth. they got McCollin Castles, the transfer from UC Davis, he will factor in and play early. But a high school guy who might be a factor is Ethan Davis, who maybe is not the most heralded guy out of that class that just arrived at Tennessee, but a guy who may have to step in and play early because of a need at that spot. He's one to keep an eye on in August for sure. Hey, Dante Thornton, you mentioned he's going to be a guy now, huh? He's, he's going to be someone they got to get the football to with him and Squirrel White and Brew McCoy. Like, I don't know how you cover all of them, Brent. I don't know when Joe, Mo- Joe Milton can throw the football a quarter mile over that there mountains. Like, they're going to have some weapons for him now. Yeah, and I think the unheralded guy of that group is J- Joe Milton's best friend on the team, the guy he's most comfortable with, and that's Ramel Keaton. Mm. You know, Keaton called a big ball uh, against Alabama on that final drive before, before McCoy's catch. He had a huge catch late in the first half against Florida. He stepped in very well last year for Tennessee with the absence of Cedric Tillman. He wasn't Tillman, but he was certainly productive. Second or third on the team in average yards per catch, a guy who can go get the ball down the field, and a guy that Joe Milton is really comfortable with because they were kind of on the second team together two years ago as running scout team and and running with the twos. So I think they have a real rapport with each other. That's a guy to keep an eye on who nobody talks about because he's, you know, not got all the measurables of Thornton. He's not Brew McCoy, Squirrel White, who, whose name obviously, you know, creates conversation all to its own. So Ramel Keaton's an untalked about receiver to keep an eye on for sure for this team this fall. No shortage of options for the Vols. They're going to have some some guys to catch the football with, without a doubt. Brent, we're at that point in the year where everyone has their opinion of different teams sort of nice and tidy and defined and in a nice little, you know, square to put it in. But you're much closer to it. I mean, you're down in the trenches close to this football team. What are some maybe national misconceptions when it comes to Tennessee? Well, it's a great question. I think you have to be careful when you're in the in the thick of it like that because you pick at all the scabs, right? You find all of the weaknesses on everything, and you can even create some weaknesses. Well, they've only got three guys at this position. They're thin depth-wise there. But when you look around the country, they're really not. I, I'm fascinated to see how Joe Milton plays. And I think Joe Milton's going to have a big year. I like where he's at right now. But it's interesting the hype that he has gotten all off season. I think Joe has taken it in stride. But there's still some people who want to see Joe do it on a week-in, week-out basis. And then when you lose the number 10 pick in the, in the draft at offensive tackle and Darnell Wright, those are big shoes to fill with Wright. 
Uh, that's a guy you never had to worry about the right side last year. It didn't matter if you were going against a top 10 NFL draft pick, a second round pick, whatever. They never had to slide a back over or a tight end over to help chip block or anything like that. They're not going to have that luxury this year. So how do they create protection help off the edges is something that I'm keeping a close eye on. And then defensively in the back end, do they play tighter coverage on the corners than they played a season ago? And who gets to the quarterback uh, with Byron Young being gone as the leading sack getter for Tennessee? Can they get home with four without having to bring a bunch of extra blisses to put the secondary in harm's way? Those are the major storylines for me for this team uh, that, that are out there. The assumption everybody has for this team is they're going to score a bunch of points because it's Josh Heupel and his offense. Well, I can't wait to see it. I can't wait for us to finally get out of this talking season and eventually get to football season, but fall camp being here means we are that much closer. Again, that's Brent Hubs from VolQuest. Get a membership at VolQuest to stay up with everything Tennessee. Follow Brent on Twitter to keep up with all his work. Brent, thanks so much, man. We'll do this again here real soon. Sounds good, man. Appreciate it. Have a great day. Tennessee fans, if you liked that video, make sure you get a membership over at VolQuest. Going to keep you in the know for all things revolving around your Vols. Also, subscribe right here to the On3 Roundtable YouTube channel.